So the RTX 3090 Ti, yeah, it's probably real, and it's also probably going to require a 1000 watt power supply at the very least. Oh yeah, and also Alder Lake is looking really good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. Well, it looks like new graphics cards launching in 2022 are gonna be drawing a lot of power. In fact, so much so that a new power connector has been designed and is likely going to be the new standard connector going forward into 2022, at least according to Igor's lab, who was able to dig up some information on the new PCIe 5.0 power plug. Now, according to this information, the connector will technically be capable of delivering up to 662 watts and will officially be rated for 600 watts. Now, the cool thing about this connector is that it will most certainly get rid of all that ridiculous cable clutter, but unfortunately, until new power supplies actually launch, it will likely actually need an adapter to be compatible with the current power supplies that are available on the market, which will actually lead to even more cable clutter, because as you can imagine, if you need to take three different separate 8-pin connectors and and then plug it into a single, you know, 12 pin connector with an additional four pins at the bottom, as you can see in the images that I've been showing you. Yeah, that's going to cause a lot of clutter. So I imagine there's going to be some new power supplies coming out uh, at some point in 2022 or even later into 2021 here. Uh, but as for now, yeah, you're going to need some adapters. And on top of all that, if the recent leaks from the usual suspects such as comp 7 Kimi and VideoCards.com turn out to be true, then the first card to adopt this new standard will be the RTX 3090 Ti, which is all also going to likely need at least a 1000 watt power supply, especially if you're planning on doing any overclocking whatsoever. As according to the latest leaks on the RTX 3090 Ti, it will apparently feature 10,752 CUDA cores, which is actually the full die on the GA102. So you're finally going to be getting the full die on the RTX 3090. It's apparently also going to have the same 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. However, this time it's going to be 16 gigabit modules. And if you know anything about, you know, technology, you also know there's 8 bits in a byte, meaning that there are going to be 2 gigabyte modules of G6X memory, which means that instead of having 12 gigabytes on the bottom and then 12 gigabytes on the top of the card, which was leading to insane memory temperatures on the RTX 3090, this time it actually means you're going to be seeing all 24 gigabytes under the bottom side of the card, meaning they are actually going to be able to be, you know, fully cooled properly. And so hopefully those memory temperatures do actually come down. So that's definitely good. And then on top of that, it's going to be running apparently at 21 gigabits per second, which is much higher higher than the 19.5 gigabits per second that we did see on the original RTX 3090, giving it a total memory bandwidth on a 384-bit bus of 1,008 gigabytes per second. And here's the one that I actually didn't expect. It's apparently going to be drawing up to 450 watts. And of course, I will be leaving all the links to my sources in the description below so you can go ahead and see what everyone has to say about this. But yeah, fun fact, about a month ago, I did actually tell you guys these exact specs when I gave my speculation on what the RTX 3090 Super at the time, because we were calling it the Super back then, was going to actually be. But yeah, down to the exact memory bandwidth, I actually did say this. So the only thing that actually surprises me here, like I mentioned, is the 450 watts, as I was actually expecting somewhere around 400 watts. So if it ends up being 450 watts, yes, you are absolutely going to need a 1000 watt power supply. I mean, maybe depending on your components, you could potentially get by with an 850 watt power supply. But I had a friend who got an RTX 3080 Ti and was having all sorts of problems on their 850 watt power supply, and they actually had to upgrade to a 1000 watt power supply. And keep in mind, that card actually draws less than 400 watts, at least on the box. Now, we do all know that it's going to have power spikes much, much higher than that. And so if we keep that in mind, yes, it's very, very likely that if you pick up an RTX 3090 Ti, 
and even the RTX 4080 and 4090 coming after it, which are likely also going to draw a lot of power. Yes, you probably are going to need at least a 1000 watt power supply, especially if you're going to be doing any overclocking whatsoever, because honestly, guys, I just wouldn't be personally comfortable using an 850 watt power supply with the 3090 Ti, you know, or the RTX 4090 that's going to be coming out next year. So if you're planning on getting any of these new graphics cards, I would highly, highly recommend that you go ahead and do purchase a at least 1000 watt power supply because it's very likely that these graphics cards are going to be drawing a lot of power as Nvidia tries to push the envelope as far as possible on the power side so that they can compete with RDNA 3 coming out next year as well as a potential RDNA 2 refresh. Yeah, Nvidia's going to have to really push their power on their current and upcoming cards. Which by the way, if you're wondering when the RTX 3090 Ti is going to be launching, it sounds like the launch date is going to be tentatively somewhere around January of 2022 for the 3090 Ti and as for the 4080 and 4090, we're probably talking about Q3, Q4 of 2022 as well. So there's be a lot of cards releasing in 2022 but that 3090 ti is actually not too far away so if you're someone who's looking to upgrade to it once again you're gonna have to make sure that you get a hold of a very high wattage power supply pretty quickly and if you're looking for a high wattage power supply you know what hey i might as well go ahead and throw some amazon affiliate links in the description below go ahead and click on those if you're gonna buy one you might as well go through there but now let's go ahead and talk about intel's alder lake cpus and this time specifically about the i9 12900k because yes there has been yet again another leak of the i9 12900K. Now, this information comes from WCCFTech.com, and it looks like, at least according to a uh, post that was found over on Billy B by the Twitter user HXL, that the i9 12900K does actually beat in CPU Z the 5950X in single threaded performance by 20%, and in multi core performance, it comes close, but the 5950X just barely outpaces it there. So, that's actually some very, very impressive stuff because we do have to keep in mind that the 12900K is an 8 plus 8 design, whereas the 5950 50x has 16 full cores on it not you know it doesn't have these small eight cores like the 12900k so very impressive in terms of multi-core performance in terms of single threaded performance that's also very impressive seeing that they're actually able to outdo the 5950x by 20 percent that's absolutely massive but guys um you know if, if you're wondering you know what's the gaming performance of this cpu is going to be like i'm going to go ahead and drop you guys another hint much like i did back when i thought the 3090 ti was going to be called the 3090 super well here's another hint for you guys uh guess what the 12900K is not going to be 20% faster in gaming than the 5950X. I can, I can pretty much guarantee you that. From everything that I know, the 12900K is likely going to be somewhere between 5 and 10% on average faster than the 5950X in gaming. And in some select scenarios, it might not even be much faster at all. But yes, it is going to be the fastest gaming CPU on the market. But if you're expecting it to be like mind-blowingly faster in terms of gaming performance, I don't think that's going to be the case. The great thing about the 12900K is that it does bring them up to speed with AMD Ryzen in terms of multi-core performance. It also brings them up to speed in terms of single threaded performance and it actually brings them ahead of AMD Ryzen's for so for those of you out there who are using professional applications it's going to be an absolutely fantastic CPU for those of you who are looking to game on it yes it will be the fastest not by much but it will but the most important thing about the 12900k at least for me is it's going to be bringing DDR5 and PCIe5 and it's also coming out and you know I think about less than a month I'm, I'm hearing that it's going to be early November we're going to be seeing uh, the reviews for this thing coming out uh, and, and so if that's going to be the case hey that means that in less than a month we could be looking at you know looking at systems with ddr5 memory in pcie5 which i think is very very exciting now should you as a average consumer be very excited for ddr5 um probably not because it's not going to be a massive uplift right away but as time goes on ddr5 of course will definitely become a major advantage over ddr4 and i'm just very excited about it because there's going to be a lot of potential overclocking that i'll be able to do with ddr5 but hey that's just what i think how big do you think your power supply is going to need to be to run something like like an RTX 3090 Ti. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.